Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. It is Thursday, February 22nd, and Joe Biden, good old Joey, is still, is still the worst president in American history. Patriots, it's great to be back with you on this fine Thursday morning. Our lead story of the day is regarding the Biden administration for giving $1.2 billion with a B in student loan debt for nearly 153,000 borrowers who are currently enrolled in the Saving on a Valuable Education Wave Retirement Plan. Now, we'll come back to this, but we've been told that Joey's all there. We've been told Joey's coherent. He's a great mentor. He asks us questions. He pushes us. He makes us better people. He makes us better at our job. He's sharp is what they're telling us. Well, you tell me what you think from Joey here announcing the student loan debt forgiveness. This plan is the most generous repayment program ever, and today we're doing it even faster and quicker than ever before. I'm proud to announce our SAVE plan. We are immediately canceling the debt loans for over 150,000 borrowers, nearly six months ahead of schedule. Starting today, we're canceling student debt for borrowers who are enrolled in the SAVE plan and have been paying student loans for as little as 10 years if they took less than, if they borrowed less than $2,000, it's forgiven. The $12,000, excuse me, it's, the loan is forgiven. This action will be a huge help to graduates of community college and borrowers of smaller loans, putting them back on track faster for debt forgiveness. This guy's not all there. I, mean, I just pulled a small little clip. It's happened multiple times. The, the teleprompter is undefeated. Joe's teleprompter has been kicking his ass since day one. It's the most astonishing statistic we have. Joe's never won against the teleprompter. It's astonishing how the words are just there for you. And there's some sort of irony here because Joe Biden is inside a library when he's performing this, I don't know, charade, these antics. I mean, the puppet is being controlled by somebody. And who is it? I don't know. Joe's not running the country. Are you kidding me? Come on. Joe can't read from a teleprompter. He's running the country. He's not even fit to sit there and stand trial. <laughs> They're saying. This guy's a senile old man. They'd feel bad for him. They can't sit there and ask him questions. Why? Because he won't know the answers to them. He doesn't know when his son died. He doesn't know when he was vice president. I understand how insane this sounds when it comes out of my mouth, but it's real. But it's real. Joe doesn't know what's going on. So much so, you guys remember when he didn't even know about Bidenomics? He came up with this supposedly, but he didn't. But he didn't, his staffers did, he heard it on TV. He didn't know Bidenomics. He, as a matter of fact, he didn't even like the term Bidenomics. Why would you? Bidenomics sucks. So initially the plan was for July and the administration expedited it because Joe woke up and somebody read him the polls because he can't do it. And uh, they go, Mr. President, you're down. Trump is kicking your, you know what? And he goes, what can we do? On his dying breath. What can we do? Uh, well, Mr. President, we can maybe forgive student loan debt. Give them the money. Mr. President, we're $34 trillion in debt. Money. Give them the money. It's like, Jesus Christ, get in here. Code blue. Code blue. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I have fun. Did I go too far on that? Was that too far? That might have been too much, and I apologize. You guys, they're pushing it through because they want the votes. They're buying votes in a nutshell from people. That's why they're expediting this. They're not going to make it to November. They need people now. So the Biden mission says that it approved the Biden administration. Keyword, the Biden administration approved. Not, not Congress that has the, you know, keys to the purse, not the Supreme Court. No, no, the Biden administration approved nearly $138 billion in debt relief for 3.9 million Americans for dozens through dozens rather of executive actions. This is bull. This is, this is, this is such an overreach of the executive branch. It's insane. You guys, he doesn't have the authority to do this. Well, you get these little lips, right? These lefties that will make their way into the show. Oh, how do you know? How, how do you, how do you know that he doesn't have authority? Well, I don't know. Maybe because the Supreme court said as much uh, last June right here. Yeah. Last June, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down Biden administration's student loan debt forgiveness plan. 
stating the executive branch had overstepped its authority. And Joe goes, eh, who gives a shit? I'm going to just do it anyways. That's how the Democrats roll. They love spending your money. I told you that they're going to cheat again. And I'm going to continue to tell you, this is another way that they're trying to cheat. They're buying votes. They're forgiving debt when they have no authority to do so. And some of this debt is just wild. Let me just read you full four bullet points real quick because this is just head spinning. So several groups of borrowers have been targeted specifically for debt relief. So it's for those who currently have outstanding federal loan balances that exceed what they originally borrowed. So if you borrowed, I don't know, 10,000 and you owe 12,000, well, you fit in that category. Meaning what have you been doing for the last 10 plus years is the question. Have loans that first entered repayment 20 to 25 years ago. Folks, I'm only 34, okay? If you haven't figured out your repayment 20 to 25 years ago, there's some bigger issues than Joey here waking up and pulling off a CPAP machine to give you free money, air quote, free money. Now, this one is the kick in the nuts. This one is actually insane. Talk about removing personal responsibility from the agenda. Took out loans to attend career training programs that created, listen carefully, unreasonable debt loads or provided insufficient earnings for graduates as well as borrowers who attended institutions with unacceptably high student loan default rates. They want you that works hard is having a tough time putting food on the table, paying the grocery bills, paying the mortgage, paying the auto loans, paying off your credit cards, whatever it may be. They want you to pay off somebody else's loan here that sit there and took out a, a loan that created unreasonable debt loads or provided insufficient earnings for graduates. Meaning these people went into a major that ultimately didn't have a rate of return of which they thought. Give you a prime example. I'm going to go into lesbian dance theory and I'm going to make $200,000. Oh, okay. Well, how much is the major? It's 300,000. Awesome. Do you realize you're going to make $20 an hour doing that job? You're going to be lucky if you make $40,000 a year. You're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. You bigot. You Trump supporter, MAGA. Like that's what they, these are the people. They take out hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, go into underwater basket weaving or lesbian dance theory, come out with a major that's absolutely meaningless. And then we're all responsible for their debt because they wake up and go, oh God, I'm not getting paid what I thought I would. 20, 25 years down the road, they never switched careers. They never worked multiple jobs. They never tried to get out of this. Maybe some of them did, but now you're responsible for it. So again, why are, why are we stopping at student loan debt? Somebody, for the love of God, answer the question because the White House can't. Auto loans, that's a terrible investment. An auto loan is a worse investment than actual in education is, or at least it's, it's comparable. You buying a brand new car and financing it is the, one of the top three worst financial decisions or investments that you can make. Why aren't we, and a lot of Americans have them, why aren't we going after them to make a difference, to make their lives easier? What about mortgage? Why aren't we going after that? White House does not have an answer, you guys. Do you wanna know why they're doing this? Because it's a lot easier to push through an executive action of forgiving student loan debt than it is going after auto loans and all these other things, right? Because it's federalized. So auto loans aren't necessarily federalized. I don't even know if there is a federal loan through auto loans. There probably is. Hell, the government will give you anything nowadays. But uh, this is why they're doing it. So an absolute overreach. It's BS. You're not responsible for somebody else's loan, but the Biden administration is gonna make sure that you're responsible for somebody else's loan. And I also to point out, again, they're trying to cheat. They're going to do it. Why would they not? Why would he not? Nothing's happening to this guy. The dude's been committing fraud his entire life and opening up shell companies, taking money from China, Romania, Ukraine, and you know, for, for all I know, embezzling it. I mean, the fraud risk that's associated to these businesses is insane. Why would he not try to do this, you guys? Nothing's happened to the Democrat Party. Nobody's been impeached. It took two rounds to impeach DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Took two rounds. The dude's let in 10 million freaking people. And I still have people on the show in the comment section go, well, it's not really his fault. He's just following orders. You know what? You, you, you took an oath to uphold the Constitution. If your boss doesn't want to do it, you quit. I know it's easier said than done, but you quit. You took an oath to uphold the Constitution. When you have an invasion taking place, I'm sorry. You don't just go, well, the border's secure. The magnet's spread. Oh, no, it's fine. Everything's fine when it's not, okay? The guy should have been impeached. Joe Biden should be impeached for one, 
using this executive a action after the Supreme Court said it was an overreach of the executive branch, and two, for an absolute dereliction of duty at the border. But nothing will happen. They're going to cheat. I know I'm repeating. They're going to do it, you guys. They got away with it four years ago. Why would they not try it again? They got nothing to lose. What, Joe loses? He he's already losing in the polls. They don't expect them to make it another four years. You don't even expect them to make it another four years. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. This guy wakes up with CPAP marks on his face. They have to get him out there between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. because that's when, quote unquote, he's the sharpest. Their words, not mine. Well, speaking of other nut jobs, you got this New York Attorney General, Lita James, threatening to seize former President Donald Trump's New York properties if he can't come up with the money to pay the $354 million civil fraud fine he was handed down last week. A lot of people don't understand this. The way it works in New York is that regardless of whether you appeal it or not, you just have to come up with the money. So even if Trump appeals it, which he's going to, he still has to pay this, you guys. And yes, he's a billionaire, but many billionaires don't just have, I don't know, $400 million just lying around in liquid cash. A prime example would be like Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk bought uh, Twitter, also known as X now. And he had to sit there and sell a lot of assets. He had a lot of sell a lot of shares to be able to get liquid cash so that he can actually invest in Twitter and buy it. It's going to be the same thing for Donald Trump. Guys, he doesn't have $354 million just laying around. If he does, I would be amazed in liquid cash. That's insane. The reason why is you want to invest that money. Very rarely do you want just cash sitting out there because you are losing if you have $400 million. I mean, inflation was at 9.1%. I mean, you are losing a massive investment right there, investment opportunity. So he might have to sell some buildings, you guys. This was, this was their game plan all along. It wasn't a thrown behind bars. I mean, hell, it's a civil fraud trial, right? The whole goal here was to F Trump, keep him in civil suits, while Joe Biden goes out there on the gurney and campaigns on the trail and Donald Trump sitting inside the courtroom. That, that, that's the whole agenda here. That's the game plan. Create a miserable life for this gentleman, even though he's trying to make a better life for you guys. I mean, understand that. You have a guy that wants to sit there and be president doesn't need to be. He's a billionaire. He doesn't need any of this, but he wants to create a better life for Americans. All the while, you got a guy in office that's creating a miserable life for Americans. Terrorists are here. Sex traffickers are here. Trafficking children. The cartel are here. Violent gang members are here. Terrorists are in our freaking country. Inflation was through the roof. Grocery prices are through the roof. Gas is through the roof. Your energy bills through the roof. Your insurance has gone up 40% now. Russia invaded Ukraine. China wants to go into Taiwan. Iran wants to wipe Western civilization off the face of the earth. The Houthis are going after our merchant vessels on our allies as well as ours. I mean, you got freaking Hamas and Israel taking place. All this is going on. He's making your life miserable and people are still going to vote for this guy and they're going to cheat to do it. I, you know, I actually was doing more research. I think we're going to do a show hopefully this weekend if I can compile enough stuff. They're going to do the same stuff again. Mail-in ballots again. That's not going away. I understand that. It's not going away. The harvesting's not going away. The bullshit, oh, the water pipes blew up in the middle of the night. We all had to leave and we put we put dressings over the camera so you can't see. We all went home. We all went home. Sure you did. And then the, the 50 stacks of ballots this one person has it all filled it out in the same handwriting that nobody wants to audit. It's all happening again, you guys. Be aware of that. Please, for the love of God, be aware. You saw these nut jobs going, well, you don't have any evidence that it would have swung the election. How about you figure out the fucking fraud in the first place and then we can figure out if it would have swung the election or not. Why don't we audit this and actually fix the problem? It's so, I'm on a rant right now because it pisses me off. I don't care if somebody's a Trump supporter or a Biden supporter. I don't care. What I care is that we figure the fraud out so it doesn't happen on either side. I don't care. I'm so tired of this. Well, you, you know, you, you, just, you, just, you just think it swung the election. I don't personally know if it did or didn't. I'm speculating. My gut tells me it would swing the election. But I can be wrong. I'm happy to eat it. I'm happy to say, you know, I am wrong. Perform, I'm a cuss, headphones, kids, perform a fucking forensic audit on this shit and actually get it under control so that nobody has the ability to cheat. Is any, I mean, I feel like everybody's with me on that. Why would you not be? Well, I'll tell you why. Because people love to cheat and win. They're called Democrats. That's why. Well, it goes on here to say, James, who accused Trump of making misleading financial statements to banks to secure better terms on loans so that they would take over the former president's assets if he couldn't come up with the money for the fine. 
Trump, who is mounting a comeback campaign for the presidency, is planning to appeal the decision that barred him from and his two sons from doing business in New York in addition to the fine. One thing I want to point out here is the misleading financial statements uh, to banks to secure better terms on loans. The banks were more than happy to do business with this guy. Remember, the banks will send out their own third-party team generally to sit there and look at the valuation of these assets. Trump will go, ah, my, my, my building's worth, I don't know, somewhere upwards of a billion freaking dollars. And the Trump's going to come back, well, Mr. President, we really think it's probably worth 900, 950. But since you've been great doing business with us for the last fucking 30 years, you know what, we'll eat that difference. That's fine and all, because we're only going to give you about 25 to 50% of the loan of which is valued against your asset. So the banks were happy to do this business with him. It works great for me. I just needed the money. I just needed a little bit of 500 freaking milli mil because we're going to build a huge skyscraper. This sucker is going to be seen from space. So they wanted to continue. Nobody was hurt. How are you going to have a fraud trial when there was no damages, but you're having them pay $354 million in damages? Look, he, Again, I don't think anybody's really arguing the idea that he overstated his assets. I've never argued that. Is it illegal? Yes, I've been very clear on that. But if the bank was willing to accept that and they knew that maybe there was an overvaluation of assets because you'd imagine it would be caught in the freaking audit. It's not the only time it's ever been audited. Then if they agreed upon it and he paid it back and nobody was hurt and it was paid back so well that they're like, hey, let's do this again multiple times over the course of decades. What's the problem? Like, what's the problem? And everybody else is now having to adhere to this, which they should have adhered to it before. But now it opens up the doorways for everybody to be sued. And a lot of people are getting out of New York. I've been saying this for years. California and New York don't open a business in. It sucks. It's not a place you want to do business. Silicon Valley is sitting there, you know, the tech industry, just getting reamed from behind from the state of California. And they've been getting reamed from behind for a long time, and they absolutely love it. So specifically, James was referring to the Trump building. Why? Because that's a Trump name on front, you guys. So when they could sit there and seize that asset and take it from Trump, is it really Trump's building anymore? Or is it the Democrat Party, these progressive leftists, these nut jobs? A 72-story building with 1.3 square million feet of office space. Trump has denied any wrongdoing and claims that the judgment was politically motivated election interference. It is election interference. But again, why do they care? The Democrats don't care. They're getting away with it. They're getting away with it. And nobody's doing anything about it. This dude is being targeted ever since he went down the escalator. Understand that you have a massive corruption in our government. And I know you guys are aware of this, right? We're patriots. We get it already. I'm, I'm talking, I guess I'm preaching to the choir a little bit here. But if they're willing to get away with all the shenanigans four years ago with the election, if they're willing to get away with utilizing the deep state to go after political opponents like Donald Trump. If they're willing to utilize the IRS as a weapon to go after Christians and those that wanted to have church services during COVID, what's stopping them from doing stuff like this to a former president? And furthermore, what's stopping them from doing this to people like you and I? If they have the balls to use the, the federal government, the DOJ, the state level, however you want to phrase it, because they're all going after Trump, what's stopping them from destroying your life if they're trying to destroy Trump's life, there's not much. So Trump's going to have to still pay back that $354 million. He's probably going to have to sell some assets. I don't see him just having that money laying around. Maybe he does. Well, our last story of the day, it's, it's, it's not something I'm proud to be right about, you guys, okay? It's really not. 7.2 million illegals enter the U.S. under the Biden administration. If you're in your car, no joke, and on audio, you need to pull over. It... it, it this is, this is serious. This is hand to God serious. An amount greater than population of 36 of our states. I've said it's more than half of our states. I didn't give a specific number. I think the number I've used in the past was 28 at the time. Now it's 36 states. If you don't understand why this is a big deal, let me explain it to you. Joe Biden, we watched it two weeks ago, might've been a week and a half, already came out on tape and so that he wants to give amnesty to all illegal aliens that entered the country under his administration and prior. If you have the population of 36 states in this country present time that are here illegally that you give amnesty, and the statistic is that they're way more likely to vote Democrat their first few elections 
You will never see a Republican ever again in your lifetime sit in the Oval Office. Please understand that. It is wild that this is being let go by our GOP. It's insane. And it shows you how corrupt the Republican Party is. I'm willing to say it. I'm not, again, I've always said this. I'm not beholden to anybody. I'm not beholden to a corporation like Fox News, Newsmax, or anything like that. No, no. We are an average American. I am an average American. I always say we because we're a community together. But I got a, I got a microphone and a camera. I'm no different than you guys. I drink out of the same mug. It's the only bald Bradshaw mug I have. You guys see me wear the same shit every day, the same hat. I'm, I'm not a materialist. I'm a dude in a freaking closet right now doing a show that I enjoy doing that's trying to speak up about the greatest country that we have while the Democrat Party tries to destroy it. So much so, I wrote a book called Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. What are they doing right now? They're trying to destroy our country. Nearly 7.3 million migrants, 7.3 million migrants have illegally crossed the U.S. southwest border under President Biden's watch, a number greater than the population of three, oh, can't even say it, 36 individual states. That figure comes from U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Oh, they're right wing. No, they're not. Oh, well, you took that number out of your ass. No, I didn't. It's from the CBP, which was already reported almost a million border encounters in the current fiscal year, which runs from October through September. If the current pace of illegal immigration does not slow down, folks, fiscal year 2024 will break last year's record of 2.4 million border encounters, a number that by itself had already exceeded a population of freaking New Mexico. 2024, illegal immigrants pouring into our country is going to start exceeding state population. And Democrats will sit there and tell you it's not a freaking invasion. They will tell you there's nothing wrong here. They're idiots. These are people that can't run California. They can't run New York. They can't run Portland, Oregon. They can't run Seattle, Washington. They can't run the federal government. These people are idiots. And by idiots, you progressive leftists, you nut jobs are idiots. I'm sorry, but you are. Please wake up to what the hell you're doing here and the ramifications that this has. I might be wrong about a lot of things. I am not wrong about this. And what's even more astonishing is you have thousands of illegal aliens in New York City, siphoning funds from the government, from the taxpayers. The mayor knows it. The senators know it. The congressmen and women know it. Alita James, this nut job right here knows it. And she's going to have the balls to sit there and put a civil fraud trial on Donald Trump while you have thousands of illegal aliens in the country. You know where they are. You know where they're at in your state. You're giving them money, you're giving them shelter, you're giving them food, you're giving them Xboxes, plasma TVs, coffee, laundry services, recreational services, motels, hotels, while you're kicking out our vets, and you're going to go after Donald Trump, and you're not going to go after actual people that shouldn't be here, and a dude that pays more in taxes than a lot of those people combined. Matter of fact, a lot of those people ever pay in their lifetime, even if they were given citizenship. That's, this is the lady. You're damn right I'm riled up, man. This is some crazy crap, dude. It really is, you guys. There's not much that gives me too riled up, but when you start sitting there going after children, when you start sitting there going and allowing 10 million people to pour across our border, we don't know who the fuck you are, and it, it has the potential of hurting me, the viewers, right? Patriots like you or I. Yeah, it pisses me off a little bit because it puts my safety at risk, children's safety at risk. Sex trafficking is taking place right now. Joe Biden doesn't give two Fs. He sniffs children. Of course, who wouldn't get riled up about this, man? It's not like Joe Biden. Come on, man. Who wouldn't get riled up over it? The amount of money we are losing is insane. Nobody's doing anything about it, you guys. Please, for the love of God, don't tell me the GOP is doing jack shit because they're not. They're not, and they haven't been. If they did, this would have been stopped a long time ago. 
You can get all the National Guard down there, start seizing up the border real damn quick. They're not willing to do it. It's frustrating. So compared to the largest U.S. states, the 7.3 million number is about 19% of California's population of 39 million. To give you perspective, Canada has less population than the state of California. There's more people here, and I don't know the numbers exactly. I believe there's about 25 million illegal aliens. There's some loosey-goosey numbers. There's almost more illegal aliens in our country than the entire population of Canada. Let that one sink in. If you need to spit out your coffee right now, I don't know what, I don't know what will. So that's what's taking place there. A uh, little bit of a shorter show today. Not much news taking place other than Joe Biden, you know, getting out of bed. I guess that's news. Uh, him falling up a flight of stairs again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as that first one. But what's astonishing here is he used to go up the long staircase. You know, the one they fell up like four times. Well, he tripped again on the small staircase. And now they have a Secret Service member escorting this guy because they're afraid that he's going to fall on the short staircase. If this guy gets in four years later or another four years, there's not going to be any staircases. This guy's going to be lifted up on a on a scissor lift with a with a forklift, either one in like a casket. Or or, you know, those chair lifts, they're going to attach one of those to the staircase. Just the president going and it gets stuck in the rain. <laughs> Can you imagine Joe just slumped over like the Pope was? <laughs> hey, we got to end off on a light note. You know what? I It was pent up rage. They're going after my boy Trump. They're allowing illegal immigrants to come into our country just willy nilly. And, uh, and they want to forgive student loans because they're trying to buy people's uh, votes at the end of the day. Well, Patriots, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already got your mug, links are all down in the description. We got a store. We got a book. We got a website. We got a Spooky Adventures channel, which we'll be back this Saturday because I was sick last week. With that being said, folks, I will see you tomorrow here on The Ball Brand Show.